What is going on? You are listening to Tag's podcast, aka Talk About Gay Sex podcast, celebrating seven years of podcasting next month. This is episode 532. I am your host, Steve V, alongside Cody Maurice Doggett. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm so wonderful. Happy to be here with you guys. Yes, of course. And joining us, who we haven't wished Happy New Year on air yet, is Teddy Alexis. How you doing, Teddy? Hi, guys. Happy New Year. Yay. Hi, babe. Happy New Year. Happy Thank New you. Year. Absolutely. Well, so much to get into on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day when we record it. Drops tomorrow yes. when Drops all of you that. get it. <laughs> Absolutely. I just flew in last night from Puerto Vallarta after being away for three and a half weeks. My goodness, so long. But I celebrated my birthday last Friday, January 12th in Puerto Vallarta, my home away from home, literally. I had a birthday party at night, which was so fun, you guys. It was at this place, Coco Machete, and it was outdoors because, of course, the weather's great there. <laughs> Coming back to this, which is not. But, <laughs> but it was, I had like a group of friends all join me and we had a birthday cake. They had a DJ. It was it was as if I like lived there pretty much. Love you know? it. <laughs> it was so sweet and fun and I had a really great time. But earlier in the day, I went to Jet's Naked Beach Tour who we've Ooh. had on Tags Live before. And oh my God, it was amazing from the get-go. There was a guy that I met early on that said he listens to the podcast. And oh. shout out to you, Cody, because he was doing, hey, hello, darling, for me. <laughs> <laughs> Super oh, sweet. Can, don't come for my gig, honey, okay? All right. <laughs> it was homage to you. Okay, fabulous, yes. fabulous. I love it. <laughs> um, the Naked Beach Tour could not have been more of a party. We went out. I went with Jet, the, who is the owner of Jet's private beach tours and he, he just took care of all of us and the boat ride out there is beautiful it's a private beach there was shenanigans that happened but mostly people were hanging and chilling they set up a bar his people that his crew they're all so fun and good looking and mm. flirty and everybody gets naked you don't have to though so it's not a requirement but I certainly was. And even Jet took me into the caves, this area into the caves that you have to duck really low. And the light could not be more perfect for shooting stuff. So we actually okay. shot some video there that's oh. going to be on my upcoming OnlyFans this week. You're going to see Jet and I having some fun and <laughs> some with some other boys too. So stay oh tuned my. for that. That's on my Get OnlyFans, it. Sexy Poppy Steve V. So it was just a really great time. I, I couldn't say enough about it on what a party it was. And even on the way back, they turn up the music. We were dancing on the boat the whole way back, having cocktails and took it to a bar, a local bar that they work with, La Chaka, Chaka Laka, I think it's Chacha Laka is the name of the bar, and drag queens were performing, and it was just a super fun time. I highly recommend it if you're out in Puerto Vallarta. They do the tours Friday and Saturday. It's about from 11 a.m. to about 5 p.m., complete with drag show at the end, and it's worth it. So check that out. Oh my gosh, we have so much to get into, um, but doesn't that sound fun though, guys? It was, and I got a call during your birthday party at night, and I, it looked like so much fun. I yeah. was so happy for you. I was so happy to be involved even just a little bit. That call, it made my day, so thank you so much, and I'm so happy that you are celebrating another year trip around the sun and with us, so yeah. love you, boo. Happy Absolutely. birthday, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, shout out to Jet, who made it extra special, too, for Ooh, me. I bet yes. he did. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. Uh oh, here come the interview, the interview section. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, because you said he took you to the caves. Does that mean something or is it just literal? <laughs> what did he do in the cave? What he happened now? He took him to the caves. <laughs> he took me to the caves area. This this they're built in. It's a private beach, essentially, mm -hmm. and he's got access to it. 
it's we can be naked on there. We they they're they've given, you know Mexico has given him permission to kind of do what he wants with this private beach, and in one of the areas is these. It's it's essentially two rock formations that are very tall, and you have to go through water to get through them, which the lighting is amazing through there. Then there's a little sand area, and then if you want, you could duck down and go into a cave that is – you have to duck really low. It's like get your your best um, – what's Squatter. that? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you do leg day. Yeah. And you go inside and there you're in sand again, but there's an opening at the top and sunlight is bursting through. So it's really magical and beautiful. But of course, they've made it into a fun, I guess, a dark room, if you will, on the beach is the best way to describe it. And so there's where people can go and have fun and yeah, just enjoy it. Cool. Yeah. I love it. I think my question really was, what did he do in your cave? That, that was my... <laughs> well, you'll have to subscribe to my OnlyFans to see. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sexy Poppy Steve V on OnlyFans. Get that slug in, baby. Get it. Yes, Because, exactly. you know, I was on our Twitter last week, and I almost poked an eye out when I saw what you posted in there. <laughs> So. Is, yeah, I kind of changed my Twitter a little bit, guys, a little bit. It's still at Tags Podcast, and you can get a preview of the OnlyFans now on that. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, I didn't give you a warning on that. I got rid of certain people <laughs> like my sister and family members that I knew. They don't need to see that. So I don't need to see that. Me, me. I'm exactly. unfollowing the Twitter right now. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but it was really fun. So, highly yeah. recommend. It sounds like it. Definitely. Okay, let's get into some music news. And we want to start out with Little Nas X. Cody and I were talking about his brand new single, J. Christ, which dropped on Friday, and as well as the music video, which has a lot of queer biblical imagery in the music video. Did you guys see it yet by chance? Curious. Not just, I, I think I saw it snippets. Either. Yeah. Okay. I think I saw snippets of it. Uh, he's fighting with the devil and other, all this other stuff, but I haven't had time to sit down and actually watch it just yet. It's really I saw fabulous. The Spotify thing that they posted. That was funny. Okay. Yeah. It's really a, a really great visual video and look a great celebrity looks look alikes, religious imagery, and even himself as the queer reincarnation of Jesus Christ wearing a gold choker spelling the word sexy and the lyrics have religious tones as well including the line back up out the grave site bitch i'm back like jay christ mm. well you can imagine that a lot of people have been coming for him because of the backlash from christians but the church of satan surprisingly not surprisingly has supported the star and i watched it i just think it is it's not mocking or anything. That's what he's been accused of. It's just showing imagery, much like Madonna has done in the past for like a prayer. And it's, I don't, I didn't find anything wrong with it, but you know, people are going to come for him. He's actually taken it a little hard though recently because he said it's some of this backlash. I mean, I think if you're going to put that out there, you should be prepared and ready these days to know that they are going to come for you if you're going to play with religion. I don't know, Teddy, what are your thoughts on, you haven't seen it yet, but mm -hmm. him going, is he gone too far? Do you think in this song music video? Oh my God. No, he's a provocateur. So um, it's, it's, it's going to track what he's doing. He's been tracking for since he started. So I, I, it's, it really annoys me when people are like, Oh, he's gone too far. Girl, have you met him? <laughs> like, seriously. Right. <laughs> like, this is the type of imagery he's been using, and he's going to keep using uh, all his career. So let's just buckle up. Um, I What i seen, I like um, even some of the promos where Spotify posted, oh, here's Little Nas X again with some mid music. I guess we have to promote it, which was kind of like Beatty. So I like stuff like that. So I think he's having fun with it. And part of it, it's people getting triggered by it, which really fits into how popular he is. So I think everything he's doing is so smart because he keeps getting more and more attention. So snap snaps for him. 
Yeah, Cody, that's what a lot of people accused him of, of going this far to get attention. But I kind of agree with Teddy that this is kind of how far you have to go. We were talking about it on Tags Live that you, this is sort of his comeback, his words. Mm -hmm. And I also think that he's got an upcoming docu-film. So this might be all aligning to that. This is his independent label versus the label that he had before that he chose to do this album, which is going to have gospel tones on it. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think it's something that you have to do in this day and age. You have to be in the forefront of people's minds in order to sell records. So this is his way of get, garnering people's attention. And I just think it's, it's, it's something that he feels like he has to do. And I get that the music, he, the music is there to back it up. So uh, as long as you can back it up, you can do what you want to do. Also something that Teddy said kind of made me think about things. This is probably so embedded in him. The, these religious undertones, he probably grew up. This is just me with conjecture. Basically I'm, I'm like going off on a tangent. It's probably something that he is, grew up with so this is his way of taking that and maybe some of the shame that came with growing up in a christian environment and being a gay man and then kind of turning it on its head so this is something that he really really knows in my personal opinion i don't know i could probably talk to him for a little while and see what's going on so yeah, yeah I, I say keep on doing it i agree i agree okay moving staying in music news this story came from Teddy, who I'm assuming you're a Jim Vararos fan. From He was from season one of yes. American Idol. Season one? Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Way back. Way back. We're going way back. And you I wasn't know, even born. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> it's a great story about him where... It featured him in 2002, American Idol. He actually joined the show because of his love of Paula Abdul. That was actually first, as opposed to singing. Of course, we know he, he did fairly well. I think he was in the top, was it top eight or top 10 he top placed? 10, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, he's had singles throughout the years. He's been uh, as an actor. He was in a very funny, was it uh, the film? Uh, I'm trying to remember the film. That he not out. another gay movie? Was it that one? Or Oh, no, it was Eating Out. You're he's right, Teddy. Eating Out 1 and 2. Right, exactly. Yeah. So he's taking a, bit, a break. He got married and was together for quite a while with his first husband, and they divorced in 2017. Since then, he's met another man and married that guy. So it's been... a you know, a long road, but he's doing really well. If you remember, he started at the age of 19, so very young. Well, he has a brand new single that's out. He's gotten the bug back, and I actually listened to this song. It's very good. Take My Bow, correct? Is that what it's called, uh, Teddy? Yes. Yes. And I really like the song. I think it's poppy. It's I. He's hoping to get it released in the UK as well as having some remixes released here in America. Uh, he looks great. I think he resides in Chicago. I'll post this on Tag's podcast because the pictures of him, he's going in a more sexual direction and being more Ooh. open about his sexuality as well as his life now, because he feels like he doesn't have a lot to lose. Teddy, you brought this story to us. How mm -hmm. do you think he this song will catapult him to a level where his name will be a little bit more recognizable, given the state that we're hearing from more LGBTQ artists that are doing really well these days? Yeah, and I think that's part of what he hopes, because um, reading a little bit about him, there was really no space for him. Uh, just imagine he's in the biggest, was in the biggest music show, American Idol, right? And he was not able to really cash in on that, even though he was in the tour and, uh, you know, he was with the Kelly Clarkson's of the time. But um, he was the now, first open uh, out gay person, correct? On the show, yes. On the show. Yes. Exactly. So, and then he did a couple of movies. He, he, as you said, he did a couple albums, and now he took a break. He's on now in his forties, so he's a total zaddy. And I just, I just was looking him up because they just posted the eating out movies on the internet. So I was just like curious because I'm always curious about you know the actors and stuff. And I found his single 
So I said we need to talk about this on, on, the, on the podcast because so what they're doing strategically, so let's talk about strategy, is that they're promoting it a lot in the UK and it's a top 10 single right now and hoping if they have enough success there that they will try to promote it here in America. But we'll just jump in the ship and promote it for our gays because That's we can right. do that. So um, yeah, it has a like really fun story. So Jim, um, I'm just supporting him because he. I grew up with him eating out as Cody and I and Steve and I are talking about. It's one of the few movies that was like 20 years ago around that was like unapologetically gay and campy and fun. And so those things are special to me. So I think we should give a little bit of that back. I agree. And Cody, it's interesting because in the interview, he talks a lot about how the timing was everything. Like I said, he was one of the first idols to come out way before Clay Aiken and a host of others. And so he said in the interview that it was a difficult time. It, he, All his label and everybody in the industry, including his dad, he came out in The Advocate, but his dad was not happy he did. And it just wasn't the same time. He thinks if it had been today or even a few years ago, he may have had a better chance at his music career. But what do you think about him putting out music now? Oh, I love it. I think it's his time, like we were saying. I think that now there is such a wealth of talented LGBTQ plus artists out there in music, including Little Nas X, who we were just talking about, and Kim Petras. I can go on. The list is so long now. And I think that this is the time for him to be unapologetically himself. He's probably he's in his 40s now, so he's probably more secure in his sexuality as well. So that is a factor, too. So I think... It, now is the perfect time. Also, you know, now's the perfect time for me as well. So look out for new music coming from Cody Marie's Doggett Dwellings. Okay. I love it. <laughs> Definitely. I love it. For sure. Definitely. Great article. I'm from you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, let's stay on. Let's move over to actors. Do you guys know the actor Andrew Scott? He is All of a Stranger's star. And he has been in a, several other things as well, but he, all of us strangers is uh, the, he's the star of, and he was in a recent interview with Coleman Domingo, with Mark Ruffalo, with Paul Giamatti. It was kind of a round table, Robert Downey Jr. Oh. And mm -hmm. it's the Hollywood Reporter's uh, recent actors round table, which is kind of cool where they all sit around and share their personal stories. He had a bone to pick essentially with Hollywood and he's tired of the term openly gay. He says, I'm going to make a pitch for getting rid of the expression openly gay, garnering an agreement from Coleman Domingo, who is also an out gay actor and quote, it's an expression that we actually only ever hear in the media. You are never at a party and you say, this is my openly gay friend. You never say it, he continued. Why do, we put, why do we put openly in the front of that adjective? You know we don't say you're openly Irish. We don't say you're openly left-handed or whatever the hell it is. Because it's two steps away from shamelessly. There's something in it that's a little near shamelessly. You're open about it. You know what I'm saying, he added. I nearly prefer shamelessly gay. And sometimes I just feel like if you got to say it to understand it, just say, you know, out possibly, or you know what, sometimes just don't say anything at all. And it is funny. Um, Coleman agreed with it. And Coleman, who is killing it with nominations. Girl, uh, you see him at the award show and that yellow suit. Oh, yes, my God. Rustin, which I highly recommend. We've talked about it. Of course, the color yeah. purple. I've no, I used to be friends. I am friends with Coleman Domingo back in San Francisco days and love oh. him dearly. And so it's like just friend, so, friends or friends? Friend, friends. <laughs> we okay. used to the, the box. The box in San Francisco with Paige Hodel, DJ, back in the 90s. We used to dance side by side forever. Really? And then a few years ago, or maybe six or seven years ago, we took our mom to London and we went to go see uh, Coleman in a musical, Something Brothers. 
and it was so good. And he met us backstage afterwards and gave us a tour. And then we went to P uh, Panto, which is a British holiday thing that they do there. And my mother, we have a picture with him. It's so cool. But just to see his star and him for him to get his accolades now from those back in those days is just, I mean, he's so talented. I'm just so happy for him. But Coleman agreed with it. And back to what we're talking about, openly gay, even The View this morning introduced him and said, openly gay actor, Coleman Domingo. How do you mm. guys feel about that? Do you think that's something that we're being a little sensitive about? Or does uh, actor that we're talking about, Andrew Scott, have a point, Teddy? Wait, I have a question about Coleman. So Yes. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> that was not the question that was interesting. <laughs> oh you forgot goodness. we have Teddy on well, the show today. Well, no, I, I know. <laughs> You're going to get a curveball. I didn't, I didn't cry like, in mind. You're like, I need clarification on something before yeah. we answer the question. <laughs> uh, uh, so you seen Coleman in like hot pants, right? <laughs> Yes, he used to wear the tight uh, pants. Okay, and uh, how was that? How was that? Very <laughs> nice, I must say. Very nice. Um, yeah. I, from what I remember, he always had a rockin' body, and yes, it was very nice. Ooh. I love. He's like y'all making me hot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> It was one of those things that were, was fun, flirty. We never crossed that, you know, we just never went there, although I would have, but I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely love him. But and, uh, like I said, just so happy for him. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about openly gay then. I I don't care about, you know, the, the thing about representation is that sometimes we get caught up on semantics and we don't talk about actually creating frameworks for true storytelling to be told. And we have a 30 minute discussion about if you should be Latinx, Hispanic or Latino, seriously. Um, if they want me, want to call me openly gay, call me openly gay. I'd rather have a conversation about how to bring more queer stories to TV in uh, than that than having that conversation so i i don't care if you call me openly gay or whatever i don't have an opinion about that yeah i i, I totally hear you and i think i kind of agree with you too it's kind of that's your bone to pick i know it's where we're at now and i'm sure someday it won't even matter to even mention any of these things you'll just see someone with on the red carpet with a partner of some sort mm -hmm. and you'll just think that's their partner you won't even think gay straight non-binary bisexual you'll just be like that's who they're with now but i guess it's where we're at now i would agree with you i'd like to see a little bit more representation we're going to do another story about traveling that series traveling strangers in a minute and this may come up again but cody how do you weigh in on this um, I kind of disagree with you guys. Uh, not totally, but I think that words are very important. And I think that mm -hmm. the uh, this actor bringing up the fact that straight people don't have to identify as openly straight. It's kind of demeaning. I understand that what you guys are saying is that there are bigger fish to fry at this moment. So I'm sorry, I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> um, but I do think that this is this is something that we should be thinking about because as far as our sexuality is concerned, I think that we shouldn't have to define it and we should not have to state to other people with our verbiage and how we're being referred to is actually being proud of who we are. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, it, that also makes sense too. I hear both of your points and I... You know, I probably hadn't thought of it until he actually brought this up, until Andrew Scott brought this up. And I hear what you're saying too, Cody, because we have to put that little label on there, openly gay, where others don't have to do that. And it mm -hmm. just means... Can you imagine... I'm sorry to yeah, pause no. for two seconds. Can you imagine somebody saying openly white or openly black or openly mm -hmm. Native American? That sure. would be ridiculous. I just could not imagine anything like that. Well, I'm sorry. Go, the, equivalence, go. the equivalence is weird because you're talking about sexuality and uh, ethnicity, which is something that you cannot hide. I think what you're saying, Cody, is which I agree, actually, it's that the framework is a heterosexual 
framework, right? Because they're saying it from the lens of heterosexual people uh, about gay people, right? Mm-hmm. They're calling openly gay because m- most of the people saying those words are straight and saying that they have to qualify you. Yes. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I still I still uh, hold true to my point, though. <laughs> yeah, and I don't I don't disagree with you. I just wanted to add a little bit of context to the conversation. Yeah, Steve, no, what, I think, yeah, I agree with both of you. I mean, I think there are bigger fish to fry, but it's we need to start having some. I think we're now at a point where we could start having some of these nuanced conversations. And this was a table talk type Amen. of situation, round table, if you will. Don't want to put Jada Smith, give her more attention. Um, <laughs> and I think that, you know, it's a nuanced thing that we're probably hear more of as years come. So I think it's, you know, there's room for all of these conversations to be having. And so I get where he was wanting to bring that up. He's probably probably been asked that a lot or been introduced like that a lot. And, you know, I'm we don't as non-celebrity types don't get asked to be presented like that. So maybe it's a little hard to understand if you're constantly being introduced that way, but I don't know. It's interesting. I do have to say that something that is amazing about that table, it's that there were more than one queer man at that table, Mm. which usually there's none. Mm. And last year, the only one that was there was um, Cole Porter. So, you know, now yeah. we're having two guys. So it's just, that's actually more, I think, more important, right? That we are increasing the numbers. Yeah, it's and the Hollywood Reporter. So, yeah, which is, you know, it's not like Out.com did it, <laughs> you know. So this is great. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because that table I, is the people that are tracking for the Oscars and the main awards. That's right. That's usually who gets to sit on the, in that table at this time. Because now we're like in hot promo, 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 nominate me for an Oscar. Everybody oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Gay Olympics coming yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Gay Super Bowl. Okay. Well, there is a new app that's g- launching all-in-one social media network for people living with HIV. It just launched with tens of thousands of members already signed up. It was actually in development for over eight years. It's called Positive One. It launched in November and is available to people in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, the UK, and the US. And the people behind Positive One toot the HIV-centered social media app as a first of its kind globally, filling the need of a community longing for connection and information. And on the app, members can find educational materials, drug details, local support networks, and personal connection with both professionals and peers. Um, People with HIV experience stigma due to the outdated stereotypes and misinformation. David Vaughn, who's a consultant to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and someone living with HIV since 2004, said, This can often lead to people with HIV feeling isolated and experiencing poor mental health. I think this is a really great addition to the growing number of apps that we're seeing. It seems like every year there's a slew of new ones. This one in particular, because I think there still is stigma, sadly, on platforms like Grindr, Scruff, or people that put positive, H, U equals U. And while I think we've come a, a long way and you know, maybe one could say it's sad that we have to actually have this, why can't it just exist on all of these current apps? I think for information, it's going to be a really good platform and it's a hybrid, which is kind of cool. So so you can meet people, but you could also find information about your meds, perhaps, or maybe you're switching over to a new method of your meds and you could talk to other like-minded people. Also, stigma, I believe, still exists. And so you wouldn't have that on this new positive one approach. Cody, what do you think about this new app? Is is this needed? Do you like this? I think it's great. I think it is needed because I know that there is still stigma out there. I think it's much better than in the 90s or 
even the early 2000s. But I do think that there is still Sigma out there. I think that this app is going to provide community for people living with HIV. I think that it's going to provide, like you said, information, which is very, very important. So I think that it's a good thing. And anything that helps reduce stigma and <clears throat> spreads information is is going to be a good thing in my in my opinion. So I'm I'm happy about this. I agree too. I mean, years ago you would go to if you lived in fortunate to live in like a bigger city, you can go to your local community LGBTQ center, get information on this kind of stuff. But given the fact that so many of our community are online on the apps, I think it's about time that this came about. I actually think it's a little late, but I'm glad. It sounds like they took time to really develop it strategically. So I think it's a really good thing. How do you weigh in, Teddy, on this positive one? It sounds fun. I, I think um, the more tools people have to build community, the better. Um, and I agree with you. You know, back in the day, there used to be the support groups and uh, you used to have community centers. Those are keep disappearing. Groups mm. are not even a thing anymore. So, yeah, if there's more places where we can find affinity groups, Hell yes. Absolutely. You know what? Let's stay on acting because we have Teddy with us because <laughs> this story, you, I'm assuming, did we all watch Fellow Travelers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And it is award season, as you mentioned recently, that's currently they're all vying for top spots. And... In Fellow Travelers, Matt Bomber has gotten most of the award nominations and a lot and less so for his counterpart, Jonathan Bailey, who I really think, I mean, I love Matt Bomber so much and he is so good. He, I believe, produced this and wanted to do this. He was supposed to play Ken in Barbie and opted out of that to do this instead. And I think that's it was really important for him to tell this story. And for those of you who haven't seen it, you really please devote some time for fellow travelers. It is that good. It is about a time during McCarthyism when being gay, it's political, it wasn't easy. And the acting is so top notch. There's some twists and turns. It's just that good. But people are actually saying that is bottom shaming why fellow traveler star Jonathan Bailey got snubbed at another award show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I think a lot of, and it's really the gays on Twitter that are coming. Matt, somebody wrote, Mrs. Fish Vivo wrote, Matt Bomber getting all the awards while Jonathan Bailey is ignored. Top privilege rears its ugly head once again. SMH, shaking my head. I just learned that recently. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> Teddy, I got to uh -huh. ask you, is it bottom shaming that we haven't acknowledged Jonathan <laughs> Bailey or is Matt Bomber just the bigger actor and that's how Hollywood freaking works? Upstrom number two. <laughs> <laughs> got it. It's as simple as but that. Let me clean something up. I said Cole Porter, and I meant Billy Porter. Cole Porter's been there I for a long like, time. <laughs> I was like, isn't he dead? But I didn't yeah. want to say anything. Because Cole I was Porter's like, has been dead for a long gay. time. <laughs> I was like, is he even gay? I don't know. Yes. Is Cole, was Cole Porter gay? Yes. yes. He was, he, that he we was, do uh, know, but dead, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, okay, I'm doing a horrible joke. I'm not even <laughs> going there. I mean, maybe he was on the table, but you know. Um, <laughs> so th that's the problem with this the the voting of um of the of it all. It's that if we talk about SAG, that's the union, right? Right. And people are not going to vote for somebody that don't have name recognition. Sadly, that's how it works. And I do agree as somebody that has studied acting that Jonathan's performance is super incredible and should be, yeah, it should be tracking way more because what he brought to that character was a whole arc of characterization that I don't think even Matt really was able to do. How nuanced. <laughs> He's no, amazing, I mean, man. The though. topic, yeah. the topic is 
uh, comparing the two men, right? Yeah. <laughs> I usually don't compare performances like that, but that's the topic. Uh, but I have to, I do have to say that I think he should be tracking. He just won the Critic Choice Awards though this mm-hmm. this weekend, so at least he's getting some love. Um, Jonathan um, Bailey. Yeah, Jonathan Bailey. Jonathan, though, he topped in one of the scenes, though. So I don't know. <laughs> Remember, that was like the big thing that he let him top him. Yes, it was just for the most part, he was always the yeah, was, sub, if you will. Which, but I, I, honestly, if you're a fucking bad bomber, like I'm like a bottom all the way. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's so beautiful. I he know. really is. Oh, my I goodness. Know. But a nice guy, too. I mean, I've. Been, I met him a couple times, and he was really nice and just super. Here sweet. we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I interviewed him once, and he, he I was fumbling around. This was we, we used to have a site called ProgressivePulse.com, and we would do films and lifestyle. And they were doing a table or a, a reading on Broadway of it was called Five, and. It was a gay political agenda type piece, just a reading, and he was one of the actors, and I was by myself. Normally, I would have had my sister help me with the camera, the tripod, and I got an interview with him, but I was fumbling around with my tripod. It was He's tall. I think I had interviewed somebody even taller before, so I was trying to fix it, and he was so patient with me as I was fumbling like an idiot. He could not have been nicer, but and then I stared into his blue eyes and asked him questions. And everything but, was okay. Yeah, everything went okay <laughs> after that. He could have been more, I mean, this was, well, he was still very, you know, white collar and all that stuff, and he w- could not have been more patient for my fumbling <laughs> idiocracy. So, Cody, how do you weigh in? I just love that you know you know two of the hottest gay actors <laughs> oh right now. I'm oh like my God. <laughs> so jealous. Jeez. <laughs> no, I do think that. it is. I think it's actually bottom shaming because, oh. yeah. Now it has to be difficult here. <laughs> I completely disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think, but I do think it's bottom shaming. I think that maybe because he, he of his 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 role in the show, maybe it is seen as as I don't know less weaker. But I, exactly weaker is a perfect word for it. I think that his performance was so I was taken in by him every single time he was on the screen, and I do love Matt Bomer; he is amazing. But for me, the one to watch in in that show was definitely Jonathan Bailey. Right. And there are two different types of parts, too. I mean, Matt Bomber is supposed to be the, you know, holding all this in political. Mm -hmm. And it's the nature of his part to be this certain way. The other one has to we don't want to if you haven't watched it, we're certainly not going to give away anything. But the other one has a little bit more range based on what his character goes through. And that's all we're going to say. And so Mm -hmm. and he delivers in that, I believe. And it's. So, yeah, I can see. I'm glad. This is another nuanced conversation that we're starting to have. We've been talking a lot about musicians and LGBTQ artists that are now starting to see their roses and getting their time. Jim uh, Verraros, who we're just talking about, the same thing is happening with acting as well. And these are the type of nuanced opinions, conversations that we're starting to see on social media. And it's I'm here for it. It gives us fodder to talk about. And yep. I think mm-hmm. it's we're in a different shifting period. We're not there yet. And we but you know, we're starting to see these little shifted conversations and opinions that we have. And I love it. So yeah. Okay, well, anyways, they have an opinion piece here, and somebody was struggling with maintaining my sexual desire for guys I date. They wanted advice. Oh my goodness. I'll explain it a little bit more. Uh, they wrote, I struggle with maintaining my attraction and sexual desire for guys I date. We start off with this explosive chemistry, and then it's just gone from me. So many guys internalize this as rejection, but it's not at all. I've loved many of them and love our time together in so many ways. I am a very sexual person. I love sex. I just lose my sexual desire for them. I recently came across something called fray sexual, which really sums me up. Basically, it's a sexual orientation for someone who experiences sexual attraction towards people they don't know or don't know very well. That's me, but it, it but is it 
for real? Or is it just bullshit excuse for being a whore? <laughs> he wanted some <laughs> advice and a lot of people said it's just the gay community and you lose interest. Um, I mean, I think you haven't found the right person in my mind if you don't want to continue to have sex. But I do, it is a labeled term for a sexual. I think you need to look a little bit deeper and figure out who you're really connecting with. I mean, I went a long period of time where I was just having fun sex. I wasn't really looking for anybody, but I did sort of set an intention last year that I've taken into 2024 where I want to connect with certain people. And I'm starting to experience that with a couple different people, which is really exciting where I have had sexual, great sexual experiences with them the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth time. Okay, now I'm just bragging. But <laughs> I, the 18th I mean, time. It is a real one thing. Night. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> and so, well, I feel for this guy. I do think there's a way that, but you have to consciously want to, like, what did you like about that person? And maybe you're just not reading the meeting the right people. It's more of a one-off thing. Cody, how do you weigh in on this guy's conundrum? Oh, I got so much to say on this. Uh, <laughs> I see your point, and I do think that that is a possibility. I'm going to like provide a alternative a thing, uh, an alternative insight into it. Some people I feel are not really prepared for when love changes. So I feel like a lot of people are out there. They get high on that first initial rush that you get when you fall in love with somebody and you think that it's going to be like that the entire time. You have to work at love. It, love is not easy. It's something that you have to go out there and say every day that you want to be in love with this person because it's not always going to be roses. It's not always going to be fun. It's not always going to be, sometimes you're going to fight. Sometimes you're going to disagree on things and you're going to be moving in opposite directions and you have to find a way to come back together because somebody that is important to you, you do not let them go. So that's yeah. just that my perspective on and it. And I hear you. It sounds like you're talking more relationship. I feel like this person went on a date and then... I thought he said that he dated them for a couple months, right? No? Mm, no? Did I say that? Let me see. I don't know. I, maybe I just... Maybe I inserted it in there. Maybe you're projecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I loved many of them and love of... Love... Let's see. So many guys internal is this. I think phrase sexual really means... Uh, it's sexual orientation for someone who experiences sexual attraction towards people they don't know or know very well. I've read about this uh -huh. before and you're sexually attracted to people you do not know. And then the minute you do get to know them, like on a date, you start to like, well, and you had sex with them. It's like, I already know them. And so, oh. and to me, sex, if with somebody, I've been on dates with people before where I was like, I like them. Right. And, you know, but I didn't I wasn't I was like, yeah, it was just sort of lukewarm and it was a nice date. I've recently been with a couple different people that I really am intrigued by them and I want to know more about them and I'm sexually attracted to them. So each time the sex gets better and better because I want to know more about them sexually and it gets better. And so that's why it keeps going on and on. Frey sexual really just is you're attracted to somebody you don't know. And then once you do like the date, it's gone. So I don't what? know. That doesn't make any, I'm sorry. That doesn't make any sense to me. This man really just trying to be out here and I'm just trying. You know, but it's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. I think that people often have, they only want to have like they could, I think what the person and I read about phrase sexuality before is that they can end after they've had sex with this person, they still can like this person. They can still mm -hmm. want to hang out with this person. They can see the value in this person. But they've they lost just the don't sexual want to interest. Thank you. That's what it okay. is. It's a real oh, thing. Wow. Okay. And I just think to me, I am in, often intrigued with people, but the first sexual experiences can be a little bit more rocky or you're just kind of like, oh, I don't know. And it's just, but if you really like them, it can only get better and better because then you're like, oh, they like this. Oh, I think I want to try this with them. Oh, this sounds fun. 
And so they're not, I see a light at the end of the tunnel a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Teddy, how do you weigh in on this? Have you guys heard of the Coolidge effect? No, what's that? Jennifer, Jennifer Coolidge? Coolidge? <laughs> <laughs> I really want a hot it's dog. Actually, no, it's actually know. less less cool than that. It's President Coolidge. Oh. oh. Of course we went for Jennifer. Oh, so, Cal- but- oh Calvin. You mean Calvin, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is that, um, and, and on the street they call it the new pussy effect, which is oh. once you have sex with somebody, it's never as interesting as the the before having it. Does right, and sense? I call bullshit to that, but go and keep going. No, say, it's actually there's like... actually a psychological reason for it, which is biological, which is um, uh, men, usually men, are prone biologically to spread their DNA more. Right, so your body tells you, "Oh, you already had that. Let's find somewhere else to put your seed." However, as cognitive beings, humans are then you have to work towards not feeling that and not let that, you know, run your life. But the story is that, and it's called the Coolidge Effect because apparently they were doing like a, a farm tour uh, with the president and they they show him um, this bull, which was like one of those semen bulls, right, that they spread around. And he's like, well, this bull is our most important bull here in the farm because he has sex with a hundred cows a day. And the president uh, says, with the same cow? <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're like, no, it's a hundred different cows. So and, and so then the, the president is like, oh, that makes sense. So then that's why they call it that. So um, Go ahead. So see, this theory works for me when I'm thinking about things like, okay, the New York Eagle here, where it's a cruise bar or a sex club where it's, you kind of just want to get as, you know, you have your fun and you want to meet somebody and have some fun over here. And then you want to have some fun over there. And then you may see them the next time at the same bar the next week. And oh, I already did that with that person. It's more of a fun numbers game kind of thing. I'm not getting to know them. I'm having sexual sexcapades, and that sort of makes sense to me in that context. What I think yeah. a lot of the phrase sexuality is talking about, or what this person was talking about, looking for advice, was that they actually are going on dates with people. They like the person. They've gotten to know the person. They actually would like to do more things with this person, but... They've had sex with the person. The sex could have been good, but Mm -hmm. they no longer are attracted to them sexually anymore. And I just think that's a therapist moment that you need to work out, I think. because, And the fact that they're writing in shows that they want some advice on this. I think you need to find, if you like them and you like them sexually, to me, was the sex really that great? Because to me, like I said before, Sex the first time can be good, but if you really are into that person, it can get so much better and better. I don't know. That's just how I weigh in on that. I don't hear that. Yeah. Yeah, I now that I finally can grasp it, I feel like it was like working my brain overtime over here. I don't think I'm built like that. And I do think it is completely legitimate for this to happen because I honestly think I have dated people like this. Because I feel like once we first have sex, afterward, once we first had sex, then afterwards, it was a very, a coolage effect. It was a cooling down effect that happened. (laughs) And (laughs) make that work, make that work. You know what? I'll make it work, girl. And I (laughs) think you used it in a sentence. I did. Look at me. I'm improving. I I think that because of, like you said, because of something, maybe it was trauma, maybe it was something else that went on in their life, but something has made them feel like after sex, then that there is nothing else there for them as far as another sexual encounter is is concerned. So maybe they should go see a therapist. Yeah. And it's like I've been with people, be- guys before where... It's like I like them, we had sex, and it just wasn't that great. But I, you know, we weren't figuring, I'm thinking about a guy last year that I met at the beginning 
the end of 2022 into 23 and we went on our first date go back to the old archives for those episodes but <laughs> i went on a date and we just couldn't seem to get the sex right but i was so in- i really liked him and we would mm-hmm. go on these dinner dates and we'd talk about great stuff and we just weren't getting that sex stuff together i still wanted to continue to try and then we it faded out or it coolaged out i guess <laughs> not really for the sex it really cool well i think for me it did i think then later i told on the show later that he on one of the apps or instagram came back and was like he saw me in an uh, a harness at one of the BDSM events that I had went to and he was like, "Ooh, Poppy, you look so good." And we DM'd each other back and forth and turns out he was really wanting to be a sub when we weren't approaching that in our initial sexcapades early on. It was like I think people thought he should have been the top or we I made him the top and we should have reversed it. But then it was almost too late information to kind of go backwards. We sort of nursed that, but I was like, "Eh, if we didn't figure it out, then <laughs> I'm not going backwards. But mm-hmm. at least I knew I got information on that's why it didn't really work because we were approaching it all the wrong way. But it wasn't really this type of situation. Like we both wanted to continue seeing each other and we were trying sexually. It just we weren't hitting the mark, literally. <laughs> Interesting. Sex yeah. is, is really complicated. I, just, I'm, I love talking about stuff like this. Yeah, absolutely. And we want to know how you all weigh in. So let us know how your dating sexcapades are coming about this 2024. We really want to hear from you. So uh, it's the end of our show on this. But good news is we've got a lot more. It's the beginning of 2024. And stick with us. Okay, you can always follow my co-host. You can follow Teddy. Um, Follow him on Instagram at... Teddy Alexis, any other things you want to promote or plug, Teddy? Girl, nothing coming up. She's <laughs> <laughs> nothing through the pipeline right now. Got it. No, no, no. Love it at Teddy Alexis. Follow Cody. He's a life coach. Follow him at KMD Coaching. KMD Coaching or his personal account at Mr. Maurice. Follow me on the gram. I am underscore Steve V. Follow my OnlyFans. <laughs> Um, onlyfans.com forward slash sexy poppy Steve V or my Twitter account account that Teddy mentioned where you can get a little preview at tags podcast at tags podcast and guys thank you so much as always I love talking about this shit and in the meantime continue having hot 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 gay gay sex. sex Love oh. it. Yes, I got an arrow. <laughs>